Hey Tea Sipping Bookworms, what's up? It's me Gabby from Tea and the blog of books, tea and everything me. And you are watching another blog post under the series entitled Inspiration. This blog post is titled Arguing Semantics. Words do have meaning. All right guys, so before I get into this very nerdy but I'm sure you're going to like it because you're a tea sipping bookworm. Very nerdy but interesting topic surrounding words, okay? I wanna to talk to you about the tea that's in my cup. First of all, look at my tea cup. Isn't it so cute? It matches my bedroom. And the tea inside the cup is delicious to die for. I love sipping this uh, tea in the summer, chilled actually. Right now it's not chilled, it's warm. But it's called White Rose by K&G Blended. It's a white rose tea or a white tea laced with rose petals. It's just so divine, guys. It just takes me to another world. I love this tea with a little honey. It's delicious warm, but I absolutely love it chilled. Like I just gulp it down when it's chilled. It's so delicious. Um, so there you go, guys. If you're wondering what's in my cup, there it is. If you're a tea producer, tea provider, tea shop owner, tea whatever, and you want your tea, to be featured here all you have to do is hit me up we can make that happen your tea can be here and your tea can also be in my cup okay guys so let's talk about this subject semantics arguing semantics okay the subject is really about words first of all when i get into deep conversations with my friends and family i almost always get accused of arguing semantics because not because i like arguing semantics you know like one of those annoying people who just pick apart everything you say no but I listen to people intently and I really do hold on to the words that they use. Not to use it against them, but to understand them. I feel that words have so much <clears throat> deeper meaning. Excuse me, let me take another sip of my tea. I feel that words have so much deeper meaning than just the like simple definition <clears throat> that's provided in the dictionary. And when people use words, I really attach this meaning and also a more intrinsic meaning to the word and try to understand the person where they're coming from and a lot of times people just haphazardly especially americans we americans have this problem we just haphazardly use vocabulary we don't really care you know if we're getting the definition right or whatever but <clears throat> for somebody like me who holds on to the definition and also the intrinsic meaning of a word what happens is is that you're trying to say one thing but i'm catching another because you're not careful about the words you're using and i'm very very careful about listening to the words you're using okay so i always get accused of arguing semantics which you know eventually everybody understands that i'm just trying to simply understand okay but the reason why words are important to me is because it's just part of my personality i've always been fascinated with words uh word play i love word play i love um I'm a creative individual okay so a lot of my creative uh, inclinations have to do with creative writing poetry storytelling um you know i'm a tea sipping bookworm so i mean how could you not like words and be a bookworm in general so um words are very important to me because they're part of my creative processes i'm a blogger i'm a writer i'm a i'm an author i'm I'm so many things that have to do with words and I've been that way ever since I was a little girl I love journaling I've been journaling ever since I was a little girl so words are part of my creative process part of the way that I mean we all express ourselves but really part of the way that I express myself some people express themselves in music some people express themselves in in painting in art I express myself with like the very thing that we're supposed to be expressing ourselves with um, or the very thing that you know is like the, the dominant way of expressing yourself and that is with words so another reason why words are very important to me is because I don't know if you've ever read this book here let me show you it's entitled oh, you can't see it because of the, the light it's entitled five love languages by Gary Chapman right yeah Gary Chapman you can barely see the book here so I'll put it right there okay there you go so this book you know at just briefly because I've done a book review on this book so if you want to know more about the book just go to the book review the five love languages uh, to by uh, Gary Chapman but this book basically outlines how there are five different ways people perceive love and if you learn you know your spouse's or your friends way of perceiving love then obviously you can act upon that 
in a more intentional way and that person can feel actually loved. A lot of times we love people the way that we want to be loved and although that's endearing, it doesn't translate to the other person as love because maybe that's not their love language and nine times out of ten it probably isn't. Um, so if we learn people's love languages, then we can really love them in the way that they perceive it and then they can feel love. But anyways, the book is really good, very interesting. Everybody talks about it, so if you haven't read it yet, you definitely need to put it on your TBR list. So in the book, one of the five love languages is words of affirmation. And this so happens to be my dominant love language. So I perceive love from receiving words of affirmation. So when my friends and family say encouraging things to me, when they affirm me on maybe some accomplishment that I've done or something nice that I've done, um, and I'm not talking about like, you know, superficial stuff. Oh, your dress is pretty. Like that's not, that's not affirming. I'm talking about, I really enjoyed the 35th poem inside of your poetry um, book. I uh, read it and I loved this stanza. You did a really good job. Keep up the good work. That is affirmation. And that right there just makes me feel so loved. Okay, so that's another reason why words are very important to me because they're part of my love language. Like, I don't feel loved if people don't use the right words with me. So those are the reasons why words have meaning and why words are very important to me. But what about you? What if, you know, words of affirmation isn't your love language at all and what if like you're not a creative person or maybe you are creative but creative writing isn't part of your creative process do does that mean that words should not be important to those who maybe don't have these inclinations well I'm gonna tell you how I feel and then I want to know how you feel at the end of the video okay so this is how I feel I believe that words should be important to all of us and I'm not the only person that believes this the reason why I believe that words should be important to all of us is because I believe that words aren't just utterances or expressions in which we say or hear um, that just dissipate after everyone has forgotten about it I believe words are things that stick around long after the conversation um, I'm not the only one that believes that. Dr. Maya Angelou, I'm going to read like a direct co quote from her. I have my computer here. Dr. Maya, Maya Angelou, in her last appearance on Oprah's Masterclass, Dr. Angelou beautifully articulated her perspective on words and the great power they contain. She says, words are things. I'm convinced. You must be careful about the words you use or the words you allow to be used in your house. You must be careful, care about calling people out of their names, using racial pejoratives and sexual pejoratives and all that ignorance, she said. Don't do that. Words, she felt, have the power to seep into everything around you. She goes on to quote, I think they get on the walls, they get in, the, in your wallpaper, they get in your rugs and your upholstery and your clothes and finally into you. Okay, now that's deep, right? Let me take a, a sip of my tea and you can think about that for a second. Okay, so that's really deep, but we, we all love Dr. Maya Angelou. I mean, beautiful poet, beautiful writer. It's so sad that she's gone, but she, le she left us such a legacy and such fine, beautiful work. And this is her take on words. Now. I believed this long before I saw this quote of my Maya Angelou. I believe that words are much greater than just utterances that dissipate after the conversation is finished. I do believe also that words seep into things and they stick around long after the conversation is had. They stick around and they affect things either negatively or positively, positively long after the conversation is had. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, Gabby, calm down. Okay, you crazy girl. You crazy. Okay, such an artsy, creative person. Oh my gosh, your brain it's all, it's all over the place. Okay, you know, a lot of you may be thinking that about that childhood adage, uh, sticks and stones may, may, may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. You know, that childhood adage. Well, is that true? Is that really true? Sticks and stones, I mean, yeah, sticks and stones can break your bones, but is it true that words will never hurt you is that really true 
I mean, there's an ancient proverb that our ancestors quoted, and I say our ancestors because I'm one of those people who believe in, you know, the concept that humanity is all connected, we are all one, we are all part of one large family. Um, there's no such thing as race, but we just use it to kind of define the differences that we see in each other, but there's really no such thing as race. There's the human race and that's it, okay? So our ancestors once said that life and death are in the power of the tongue. So which one is true? Our ancestors or the childhood adage? I'm gonna go with our ancestors, okay? Now this is the reason why I believe that words affect us as human beings and affect everything around us, okay? Um, another book that I'm going to give you to write down that you can add to your TBR list is this book. I've talked about this book uh, hundreds of times on the blog. Matter of fact, this book was the very first blog post, the very first book review, and I believe the very first blog post that I've ever done. If it, if it wasn't a tea review first, this is definitely the very first book review that I've done. It's called The Secret Life of Water. I'll put it here too so you can see it. The Secret Life of Water by Mazaru Emoto. This gentleman spent his entire life studying the molecular build of water. I'm about to get nerdy for a second, like it's about to get straight nerdy, okay? He studied the molecular build of water and how words, both spoken and written, affect the molecular build of water either fortifying it or destroying it now hold on okay i'm gonna i'm gonna put you back on the wave because i know you're confused you're like abby what does water have to do with the words affecting us and what choosing our words wisely all this stuff okay think about it let me let me give you a um a fact Reese, uh, roughly 96 percent of the mass of the human body is made up of just four elements oxygen carbon hydrogen and nitrogen with a lot of that in the form of water you catch my grit you you're on the drift now okay so if the human body is made up of mostly water and words both written and spoken affect the molecular build of water either fortifying it or destroying it doesn't that mean that words can either destroy the molecular build of the water in your body? What effect does that have on human beings when the molecular build of their water is not strong and fortified? I mean, you can kind of guess. It's not really rocket science. <laughs> it's kind of science, but it's not really rocket science. I'm sure you don't feel as great as you do if your water was fortified. I'm just saying um so that's an that's one of the reasons why i believe that everybody should be careful with what they say and that words are important regardless if they're part of your creative intentions or your creative um inclinations or not words are important and they're not just utterances they are things that stick around long after the conversation has been had guys um Okay, so just really quickly, because I don't want this video to be too long. It's already too long. And this is a really good conversation. I love talking about words and how they affect us. I love talking about words in every sense. I love poetry. I love writing. I love words. I just I love any subject words, okay? But let's talk about curse words just for like one second, okay? A lot of people curse. And I'm going to be honest with you. I stub my toe. I might say a curse word, okay? I'm going through a divorce. Curse words have been something that I am trying to not entertain okay um so i'm not you know trying to be holier than thou i'm not trying to judge okay let's have a you know conversation about curse words first of all i believe that curse words are exactly what they're defined as how are they defined curse words curse 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 okay <laughs> i just feel like and this is the reason why people who argue semantics sometimes you have to pick their brain a little bit because when i hear something i hear it as it is curse words curse now a lot of times we say cuss words and you know we kind of just say it so fast that we we don't really understand what we're saying but guys curse words are exactly what what they are curse words now let's look at the definition of curse really quickly 
Now, curse can be a noun or a verb, as you know. The noun is a solemn utterance intended to invoke a supernatural power to inflict harm or punishment on someone or something. If you jump over to, you know, curse as a verb, you have to invoke or use a curse against, you know, someone or something, or you have to utter offensive words in anger or annoyance. So, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Are you intentionally trying to curse someone? Are you trying to inflict harm? Are you trying to, you know, healthily express your anger or unhealthily express your anger? It just depends what you want to do. Like I said, guys, I'm not a, I'm not perfect. I stub my toe. You might hear a curse word come out of my mouth. And I'm not proud of it because I do not like curse words. I don't. I don't like them because I find them to be offensive. And I believe that they they hold energy that is really evil. Okay. And I believe they are what they say they are. Curse words. And I, being somebody who values affirming words i can't value at the same time words that tear down so that's just where i stand now this is where i stand but i'm really curious as to what you think about these two publications that i mentioned have you read them i'm also curious to know what your perspective of words is especially since i know you're most likely a tea sipping before me and that's why you're here in the first place i want to know your perspective on words and uh, you can tell me below whether you be watching this via YouTube or directly from uh, tnblog.com. Let me know what you think about words and if you agree with me or if you disagree with me or if you agree and disagree on certain, on certain topics. Let me know, guys. And if you liked this topic, this subject or this video, go ahead and hit the like button, guys. Maybe somebody else will see the video and like it too. If you haven't yet already subscribed to tnblog.com, you want to do so. Subscribing gets you automatically entered to win free tea, books, stuff that I'm always giving away. So subscribe and also follow at tnblog on social media. You got Instagram, you got Facebook. If you would like to donate to tnblog, you could do so by just hitting the donate button at the top of the webpage. Any and all donations that you provide are greatly appreciated. And until next time, guys. That is T-end. Keep sipping happily ever after.